Jillian and welcome to Good Witch Knits. This is my vlog style podcast where I chat about things that I've been making, mostly knitting, spinning, dyeing yarn, and a little bit of sewing. You can find me most places on the internet as Good Witch Knits. I'm most active on Instagram. It has been a little bit since I've last podcasted, uh, not because of any hardship or tragedy in my life, nor for want of finished objects and content to share with you. My life has just been full and busy in the best way. When I last checked in with you, I was about to go on my trip to Canada and the Pacific Northwest, and I had a blast there. Um, I'm actually, <laughs> I did not make this cup, but this was a gift to me from my pottery teacher. Dennis Evans, if you ever have a chance to take pottery in Naramata, Canada. This is the expert craftsmanship you'll be learning from. Um, I do have a finished object behind me that I finished. I wasn't actually planning on showing this off, but why not? Uh, this is, I almost didn't bring this home because this built vase didn't turn out how I wanted it to. Uh, but Everyone at the center insisted that I bring it home, and I'm so glad that I did, because right now it's housing some of my spindles and uh, spinning accessories. I have my flicker in here. Spinning things won't live in here forever because I know that this can warp spindles. Uh, but yeah, this is some pottery that I decorated with Scruffito. It turned out a lot messier than I had originally envisioned, but I like it sitting here on the craft table. Another thing I want to address off the bat, this wrist guard that I'm wearing. Um, I am still able to knit, but I have been dealing with some mystery pain again in my wrist. I actually didn't knit at all for a week, which I can't remember a time in my life last where I didn't knit for a week, to really give my wrist a break and try and figure out what was going on with the pain that I'm feeling. I've since been to the doctor and wearing this wrist guard helps a lot. I can kind of wear it while I knit. I had a great appointment with my doctor where in the past physicians have told me, well, just don't knit. This doctor, without me saying that's not an option, um, her response was, okay, let's figure out how you can knit and not be in pain, which is great. She's sending me to occupational therapy. We're gonna figure out what's going on likely tendonitis of the wrist. But yes, that's why I'm wearing this guard, because it feels really good while I'm wearing it. All right, let's jump into what I'm wearing, because I'm sat down to record this, but I don't have a ton of time until I need to be at the yarn store. This is a finished object. Uh, this is the Weekender, designed by Andrew and Mowry. I started this many months ago, like at the beginning of the year. I knit this out of Cumulus, a yarn by Juniper Moon. It is a, I think, 96% cotton, or like 94% cotton, 6% nylon blend. It is so soft. I realized I had to cast on something in this when I was helping a blind customer in the store pick out yarns, and I just appreciated the texture of this yarn. No, I never had before. And for some reason in my mind, I wanted to practice continental knitting and knit this in white. Both of these decisions I slightly regret. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but the white yarn shows off every imperfection, and there are many because I was learning a new knitting technique while knitting this. Um, and it's also white, so I'm afraid to wear it anywhere. What I think I'm going to do is use this as a dyeing project. My dad's been growing me a lot of marigolds. I've collected a lot of other botanical, natural dye goods. I think I'm gonna do some, maybe an eco printing. Ooh, that would be gorgeous on the sweater. So this, albeit a finished in project, is still very much a work in progress. I do have some other finished objects to show you. I have a basket of whips in the corner of my apartment and it is my goal to work through all of these before the end of this year, and anything that I don't get through, I'm going to frog. 
I had more motivation to get through these things because my mother-in-law, who is, I'm very, very fortunate. I love Eric's mom. Um, she just came to visit and I wanted to get through some of these projects before she visited. Because although she's a very, very supportive woman who's just genuinely excited about things that people she loves are excited about, the number of projects and things that I have around my house do veer into the extreme end of things. And while I am secure in myself and my passions and projects, I just didn't want... It was just going to be better if I finished some of the works in progress that are around my house. Let's just leave it at that. And if you've been around here for a while, you know that I have a sock tube problem. I don't have second sock syndrome, I have heels and toe syndrome. And I think I'm starting to cure this. I have another pair of socks that I finished, but I can't find them right now. I'll show them off on the next podcast, but I will show off these for right now. So this is a pair of self-striping sock yarn dyed by Valkyrie Fibers. She's out of, I think, the Tahoe Reno area badass dyer and I love her um, symbol and branding. It's really cool. This I believe was a Lord of the Rings inspired colorway which I listened to the first Lord of the Rings on audiobook a lot while I was knitting it. I paired this yarn with um, a yarn dyed by Storyteller Yarns. I don't remember the colorway but I think they pair really nicely and I'm wearing the other one right now. <laughs> so I took it off to show off. This is just a vanilla sock. Um, true afterthought, I did a twisted rib cuff and I cut into the heel to add the heel at the end. My friend Andrew, who has the podcast So So Knits, go check him out if you haven't already, um, he pointed out that I add my heel in the middle of a row and I always just kind of thought that was how you did it but he was saying some people feel very strongly the other way how do you feel does this bother you now I started over analyzing my heel placement in my self-striping socks should it go somewhere else where do you put yours my feet are cold I'm gonna put this on okay I do have some other finished objects but um, I'm maybe going to have to sprinkle them in here and there in future episodes because this will be way too long if I talk about them all. I will talk about one additional one and I'll put in pictures here of it since I don't have it anymore. It was a gift that I gave away while on my trip in Canada. So my pottery teacher, Dennis, he exclusively wears red. And he lives in a region while I was visiting it was warm, but it's going to get cool. I wanted to knit him a cap. He incorporates a lot of Celtic imagery and knot work into his paintings. He's also a painter. And I thought, oh, what an awesome opportunity to knit a Celtic knot. So I broke my knitting exclusively for myself, practice that I generally follow, and picked up some locally dyed yarn at Wet Coast Wools, a awesome shop in Vancouver, BC. And in two days, I knit this, uh, you should be looking at the pictures now, <laughs> uh, this Celtic knot hat in what I think is a great cranberry red. Um, I'll put the details down below and up on the screen. Works in progress. So I am trying to finish projects that are in that basket over there. Um, I'm prioritizing whips over casting on new things. So this is an example of something that I finally finished and bound off that had been la languishing for a while. <sighs> However, I do have a project that I've cast on and I'm going to try and finish before casting on more things. And of course I'm in the middle of a row, but the last issue of making magazine desert really won me over. There's so many things I want to make in here, but the thing that won me over the most 
was the Mariposa jacket. So I was working in Rumpelstiltskin probably a month ago and I had a cold and I was on some cold medicine. I was a little delirious. I was looking at this picture and I was stocking these yarns. So this is lichen and lace in the coral colorway. And then this awesome like Mesa burnt color of Zoe. Zoe. I've heard it pronounced both ways, but I think it's Zoe. Cotton and linen blend yarn. And I just knew I had to cast on this Mariposa jacket. This is my new favorite combination of fibers. I thought I was done holding mohair silk with things. You know, I live in Sacramento. There's only so many mohair sweaters that I can own because I can only wear them in certain months. But when you hold it with a cotton linen blend, it makes the most amazing fabric that, I mean, while I'm not going to wear on a hundred degree day, is wearable in many more situations. And it just has the best uh, qualities to it, the best drape. It's very, very soft. Okay. So this pattern is really interesting. It uses those two strands held together. When I was researching yarns to use for this project, I thought, oh, maybe I could use a heavier weight yarn and not hold two together. But you actually need these two strands for some very clever uh, pattern elements in this pattern. I don't want to give too much away. I love these bell shapes. These are on the front of the jacket that I think provide a lot of interest. They remind me of the petals of a foxglove flower. Beautiful. Powerful medicine, but also deadly. Uh, so I'm, I've just dropped a bunch of stitches, of course, because I'm in the middle of my row. But I'm really enjoying knitting on this. Um, I did put it down for two weeks because of this wrist issue. I thought maybe this was the culprit. The last time I got really bad wrist pain was when I was knitting on my flom, which is another larger, heavier cardigan. So perhaps I need to maybe be knitting with two very long needles so I don't have any weight on my arms. I don't know. I am a work in progress trying to figure out the best way I can knit on things. I wish you could touch this because the texture created by these yarns is just incredible. And I love the color as well. It's coming off a little bit more red on the screen, but it's more of a very burnt orange. Coral. It's a burnt coral. Yeah, so this might not make an appearance on every podcast because I think it's going to be quite slow going. I'm, if anything, this injury has made me slow down a lot and be very intentional with my making, which is something that I strive to do anyway, but my body is demanding it of me lately. I believe that is the only knitting work in progress that I'm going to show right now. I, since I was giving knitting a break, I've been spinning so much, um, in part because my coworker at Rumpelstiltskin, Judy, has been so kind and has gifted me essentially her entire fiber stash. So I've been having a great time exploring spinning with different fibers, blending different fibers, and spending them. And I did a lot of this in preparation for Lambtown. So Lambtown happened last weekend in Dixon. It is a fiber festival that happens once a year. Um, that attracts some incredible talent and is, I think, more geared towards the farm sourcing side of things, um, spinning, there's weaving classes, dyeing classes. It's, it's really cool. I had the immense privilege of getting to take a class with Abby Frankmont. Abby Frankmont grew up in Peru and lives there currently, wrote Respect the Spindle, and is a source of a lot of the knowledge that I have so far in my, I haven't even been spinning for a year, 
very, very new to this. Um, yeah, but I signed up for her spinning blended fibers class. And I learned so much in that class. Uh, not only about spinning, but also about teaching. She had this incredible way of um, having all of us introduce ourselves and uh, assessing where each of us were at and what our goals were for the course and then catering her instruction for both a super beginner like me and then also people like my friend Sharon who was there who is an expert spinner. Um, she said she got a lot out of the course too, which is really cool. The course focused mostly on short and long draw methods and emphasized the importance of sampling when spinning different fibers to see what's going to work best. Um, and it's kind of funny. Someone asked a question. We, we spun many different... Let me back up. Okay. So this is the little sample of things that I spun that were blended fibers. Focus there. Do the YouTuber thing. I don't know if that ever focused. I hope it did. Um, that we spun a combination of merino silk blends. This is an alpaca merino blend. Um, we spun a whole bunch of different things. I'm forgetting a lot of them now. But we focused on different short and long draw methods. Oh yes, and in the class, someone asked a question about, well, what are your recommendations for spinning a wool flax blend, essentially a wool linen blend, which I'm all about right now, and I guess it's kind of trendy, wool flax blends. And her advice was actually, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, she encouraged us to spin them separately and then hold them together if we wanted to knit with them together or like ply them together. I really loved Abby's teaching style because she also taught us to question everything, try everything out, um, not accept the knowledge that a lot of the spinning knowledge that's out there is from the 1960s of people rediscovering the craft and writing books and saying this is the way things are done, where there wasn't necessarily a continuous line of practice. Um, and yeah, so just essentially, you know, uh, to study and question everything and that there might be different methods for getting at the same end. The reason I bring that up is because I, <laughs> I think Abby would support this, even though she recommended that you not spin wool flax together. I, at Lamb Town, what did I do? I went and bought a blended wool flax fiber. And I've been spinning it, and I've been really enjoying it, but I, it's finicky. So this yarn, or it's not yarn yet, future yarn is so special. I got three two ounce uh, bits of fiber to spin up from Mendocino Woolen Fiber. Really, really cute label. This is climate beneficial wool. Um, and the reason why I wanted to get this is the flax was grown in Chico. The wool, I believe in Mendocino, it's a fiber shed pro product, it's um, climate beneficial, and it was milled locally as well. So you can't get any more farm to yarn than this. Um, and it's, this blend is also called Rumpelstiltskin, which is just pretty darn cute. I have spun up, I haven't actually uh, washed and like thwacked this yet, so you're going to see how very unbalanced <laughs> my yarn is. But I've spun a bit of it already and I practiced chain plying this for the first time which I really, really enjoyed. I love that you can go, if you're not a big spinner, essentially you're cr crocheting a single as you're plying it together the opposite way, where when you ply yarn, you're often plying off of multiple bobbins. Um, you can just ply off of one bobbin. 
so you can get more instant gratification with your spinning. And it was a less finicky way for me to get a three ply yarn. I love it. I love it so much. I don't know what I'm going to do because I only have six ounces of this total. Um, maybe I can make a top with that. Probably make a light shawl or something out of it. I'm also not sure if I'll keep it this color. Um, I'm probably going to dye it. When I was on my trip in Canada, I visited Maiwa, which is a natural dye and textile studio and shop. I picked up some sequoia extract, which creates this really beautiful brownish purple color. And you can get very different colors depending on what sorts of mordants or treatments you do. Yeah, I am so excited to be back here recording my podcast and connecting with you again. Please say hi down below. Um, let me know what you're working on. And I promise to not take such a large break before my next podcast. Thanks again for checking this out. Um, take care and happy knitting. Bye.